everyone. This is the December 21st, 2010 version of the Budget Committee, Goffstown Budget Committee. We are continuing our deliberations. Normally on a Tuesday, the third Tuesday, we get our regular meeting, but we cannot even start that until we finish our deliberations. Given that, a uh, couple of additional information that came down the pipe last night, the school board met and they came up with additional or a modification to their revenue schedule which included two items of note. I sent the email out, but many of you may not have gotten it because I didn't get it until I got home. One was a correction or I guess an update of the federal revenue from 510, 500 up to 670,000. The other thing they did was place 200,000 of reserve fund balance and 200,000 of unreserved fund balance. Now, the fun part about that <coughs> is and Keith can answer it. The reserve fund balance is a thought for, because I don't have all of the articles yet. So I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. And so this body, because uh, today is our last meeting prior to going to public hearing, we're not going to know necessarily uh, what we're presenting at public hearing, which is, <coughs> I, I don't have it from the town or the school, so we don't quite know what that is. But I'm thinking that that 200000 <coughs> I was listening last night was potential capital reserve for the elementary schools? Yes. Um, okay. we, we are considering a warrant article, as it's been worded in past years, of putting up to 300000 of unreserved fund balance into the Bartlett Renovation Fund. Um, right now, we've earmarked 200000 to potentially be asked of the voters. Okay. So the tax impact that I sent you really quickly before is somewhat askew. Um, it's a skew because it included the 200000 of the reserve fund balance, but it didn't include the potential of the 200000 for the capital budget. So it's uh, the school board number would be slightly different, and since the budget committee has not um, made a determination on anything else, then um, it may not necessarily be accurate. Let's see if Again, I can the, the budget and the school board has not determined if we're going to actually put that warrant article on the ballot yet either. Okay. Then what I sent would be more accurate than not at the moment. How's that? Yes. Okay. But it could end up being something different. And I wish <coughs> it was working quite a bit. Okay. Given that, um, let me get back. It's the 21st. I've got nothing working. Mr. Hart is always. <laughs> oh, glory. All right. Your computer came up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've got no mouse and no, no keypad. I love your computer. <laughs> All right. Given that, let me uh, start with the roll call. Hey, Scott, why don't we start with you and go towards Keith, please? Jack Rose. Wow. Keith Allard. <coughs> Paul Agris. Bill Bates. John Burt. Bill Gordon. That would be Dan Cloutier. John Heichel. Bill Hart. <coughs> Guy Karen. Ivan Bellavo. Richard Fletcher. John Dillon. Jen Dicker. Chris Kapi Samard. Excellent. Thank <coughs> you. And while you give me a moment to prepare the... We have 16 numbers here. That is a full committee. All right. All right, so we continued the school deliberations. Um, we made a determination that we wouldn't do anything until today because you guys were going to think about it more. Does anyone have a motion? Guy. I do indeed. The motion is structured similarly to what we did on the town. How would you like me to format it? You do have... I have okay. printed copies of the motion for all members. If, if you would pass those out... We won't go into any kind of discussion or anything yet until I understand the motion and um, you guys, someone gives a second. Oops, it's that way, it goes this way. Not yet, I haven't even heard the motion. I have to understand it and restate it so that <coughs> the motion is based on adjustments to specific lines as outlined in the, the document that I have. Um, 
I want to make sure at some point, and Joanne's not here, huh? She is, um, Joanne is sick again, and she just got sick this afternoon. She will be watching, we're taping. Okay. She will do the minutes um, based on the TV and through the, whatever, the detail that I know. Joanne, I'll after. email you a copy of this. Um, in any case, um, the motion is to specific lines that I'd like to get into the record at some point. Um, okay. But it involves additional adjustments to all six school budgets, that those being five through the school and one, um, five school budgets and one district budget. Okay. Um, if everybody's got a copy of this, I can run through it. Um, or do you want to? Let me, <coughs> let me do this for the moment. Uh, the current <coughs> budget that the budget committee has as far as I have, uh, we are at, <coughs> and I take it you are only looking at general fund budget, not Correct. the other two. Okay. Correct. Moment. given us is what we start this is where we currently are yes the number we currently are um, does uh, then I can give you the number which is 37 million two seventy eight four forty four that includes two hundred and three thousand three hundred and seventy six dollars that this committee adjusted uh, last week Tuesday but that also includes the total budget includes both general fund and federal and food services. So the net amount right now is 35506648. General fund. General fund. General fund only. Right. And is that shown on your handout at all? Guy? Indirectly. Okay. The handout. Oh, hang on for a second. Let me just, oh, I see. You have the adjustments 203-376 in the amount of the adjustment. For informational purposes only, yes. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you this question before I can accept the motion. Have any detailed lines that we touched or passed la or did not pass being adjusted in your motion lines detailed lines yes some of the lines that suffered adjustments yes such as FICA workman's comp etc some of those are going to in entail additional but th that's, that's that's detailed in here that's okay did the salary line of 204 2410117.2 or no that one didn't pass no, that one did pass. No salary lines that were adjusted last week <coughs> have okay. been, are included in this motion. Okay. Is the field trip co-curriculum student transportation 101, 27, 25, 511 in your motion? You just have to make sure no. that they're not there. No, it, none of them are. Okay. None of the smart boards are no. um, in no other position. No, but okay. however, the smart boards, for example, are part of a particular function and it is, it's indicated okay. in these printouts as information for the committee so that they understand the overall impact to that particular function. Okay. But so they're not part of the motion. Okay. So yeah. your motion, if I read it correctly, is 2,171,859? Correct. Okay. Give me a moment. <coughs> Six 
48 minus 2171? Mm -hmm. 859. 2171, 859. Okay. So there's a motion on the table to reduce the school budget as it exists and today the general fund from thirty five million five hundred six thousand six hundred forty eight dollars to thirty three million three hundred thirty four thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars <coughs> representing a two million one hundred and seventy one thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollar adjustment I second who was that that's me Okay, Mr. Bates, would you speak to your motion guy? Yes, sir. Um, if the committee will go to the cover page, please. The cover page is a summary of what is detailed in the subsequent pages. I want to point out a couple of things on the cover page. The, the motion involves adjustments to 254 specific lines in the budget. Um, but we can get through this pretty quickly because over 200 of them involve one of two things. One of them are uh, salary-related adjustments such as FICA, workman's comp, et cetera. Um, over 100 or 133 of them involve, involve um, adjustments that I made based on an examination of past expenses, current budget, and current spending rate, and what I anticipated was or what I uh, determined was um, an expense history that didn't justify the requested increase. Yet <coughs> almost every one of them still entails an increase. Now, if you look at the cover sheet and you look at the fourth, col the third column from the right, you'll notice that compared to last year, this motion includes an increase of 6.8 percent average to all the schools and in fact includes an increase of 0.6% to all the schools from what they currently have, from the current budget. But the important thing to note is that as we go through this, not a single teacher line or paraprofessional salary line, including the newly proposed ones, is adjusted at all. These adjustments are made in other lines. And the goal that I had when I put this together was to come up with a budget that leveled the tax rate without affecting the teacher line. So if you'd like, this is not going to take very long. We can go through the six separate budgets that entail the entire school budget so that I can explain the details of the motion. The first page is Bartlett. If you look at the column on the right for every one of these adjustments, and Bartlett has, there are 27 lines there that involve an adjustment. The majority of them the rationale is that past expenses don't justify the increase. And if you look at the columns with last year's actuals and the current budget, and you look at the adjustment that I made versus the proposed, the majority of them nevertheless indicate an increase. It's just not, the inc it's not as much of an increase as was requested. Okay? Um, that's pretty much all. That's the, the, uh, the rationale behind all the adjustments at... Bartlett, except for one, um, there's an adjustment there of eliminating a part-time custodial position. Um, the total of that is 8,000 plus the remaining related lines, FICA, Workman's Comp, et cetera. But other than that, all the adjustments I'm proposing here, and this still, by the way, is an increase of 3.85% for the Bartlett school budget over what they currently have. The next page is Maple Ave. Lab, we, as you look on the right column, you'll see that the vast majority of the adjustments are based on past expenses versus the current request. The overall adjustment to Maple Lab still nets an increase of 2.78% over what the Maple Ave current budget is. No teacher lines are affected, no paraprofessionals are affected. There is a reduction proposed in this motion of eliminating one of the three custodial positions in the Maple Ave budget and the related lines, of course. Um, I don't see anything else here that needs to be pointed out because they're pretty much all same rationale. The next one is the kindergarten. All of these adjustments except for one, except for, I'm sorry, except for two, 
have to do with past expenses. The overall effect of this adjustment to the kindergarten compared to the current budget is an increase of 1.54%. It's just not the increase that was proposed, but it is nevertheless an increase. Again, third school here, we have not, this motion does not affect <coughs> teacher lines or, or paraprofessionals at all. Now the next two pages are Mountain View. The rationale is pretty much self-explanatory for a lot of these, as you can see, past expenses versus the requested amounts. And again, look at the columns on the actuals, look at the current adopted budget, and look at the request. The majority of them grant a request, it's just not a request that is as sizable as what was proposed. But in addition to that, on there's two pages, by the way, in Mountain View, okay? There's a proposal here to eliminate one of three secretarial positions and two of the eight custodial positions. So basically <coughs> proposing that we get by with six custodians instead of eight. The rest, it's the same thing. Looking at analyzing past expenditures, current budget adopted versus what was requested. The net result is an increase of 0.03 to the Mountain View budget. The next two pages are Goffstown High School. Once again, the vast majority of the adjustments show an increase over the current or the past or a combination thereof, but not as much of an increase as was requested. Now there are some personnel adjustments in this motion to the Goffstown High School budget. One is to eliminate one of three admin positions in the assistant principal line. Another is to eliminate three of the 11 custodial positions we have and get by with eight custodians instead of 11. The rest are pretty much self-explanatory. Past expenses don't justify the increase. In this case, the overall budget adjustment to the high school is a reduction of a little more than one-tenth of one percent over the current budget. But the overall effect of the five schools is nevertheless an increase of 6.8% over what the current budget is for those five schools. Now the last two pages, now we get to the district. The district adjustments, this is not the SAU. The SAU line is included in the district budget, okay? And I'll point out real quick, there is an adjustment to the SAU budget, and we can't make this adjustment but the SAU did make an adjustment of 9,097, I think it was. So that's part of this motion to bring down what was originally in the proposed budget to the level that they have adjusted it themselves. The rest of this budget encompasses a number of personnel adjustments in the district administration. One of them is to eliminate two technology, te uh, I'm sorry, there are two technology technicians. I'm proposing in this motion to eliminate one. There are two program coordinators. I'm, I'm proposing to eliminate one of those positions. There are four other admin positions under support services district salaries. I'm proposing to eliminate two of those four admin positions. And I think there's one other. Nope, there's not. The rest of these adjustments, if you take a look at it, you'll see that the majority, again, is weighing past expenditures versus the requested amount. And again, in the majority of the cases, the adjustment still is an increase. But overall, to the district, this portion of the budget, the motion would, would yield a reduction of 13%. So that the overall result of the motion is a reduction to the current budget of 2.42%. Now we've been talking about 10% since June. I think, I'm hoping for the support of the committee on this, I think <coughs> this is a good secondary starting point. There, there are, the important thing to remember about this as you look at it is that these numbers will result in I think a three-win situation. One, 
the school district is not going to have to sharpen their pencils and try to deal with a 10% reduction. This is 2.4, I'm sorry, yeah, this is a 2.42% reduction to the current budget. Two, this proposal levels the tax rate. It's not a level funded budget. A level funded budget would increase the taxes. But this is a level funded tax rate at least. And the third and most important is that the winner is, are the students we're educating because they get to keep all the teachers they've got, all the paraprofessionals they've got, as well as the newly proposed positions for paraprofessionals and teachers. And I'm hoping that looking at these, sure, it's not ideal, Ed, but it's not 10% either, and it works. I think it's a compromise for everyone. The taxpayers make out that their taxes don't go up. Their tax rate doesn't go up. The school board doesn't have to work with a 10% reduction. They work with a 2 some odd, 2.4% reduction. And none of the teachers go anywhere. I'm hoping for your support. Thank you. Bill, you want to talk to your second? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, <coughs> I, think, uh, I think the guy is correct. It's, this it does represent um, <coughs> a, a compromised view of how it is we can, uh, as a town, make it through some pretty tough times. <coughs> and uh, while the 10% uh, reduction exercise we had requested as an exercise was uh, done for trying to get a sense of what lines we might model in terms of reduction, whether that was 10, 6, 8, in this case 2.4 is immaterial. That was the originally in, in intent. Um, this budget, uh, again, keeps, keeps the uh, teacher and paraprofessionals attack, which I'm, I'm very much in favor of and quite frankly I have heard from a lot of people in town that that was uh, one of the very critical areas that people felt strongly about and this addresses that. Uh, the, the other item is that uh, although I've, I've heard this before on this committee during other discussion about uh, last year's actuals uh, and the fact that since we're supposed to be in uh, zero base budgeting and that the uh, numbers that the respective department heads come forward with represent a zero base budget based on the needs they've assessed. In tough times, this is one way to try to take a measured, appropriate approach to trying to live with less. And, and that is to say, while I know, uh, Scott, sometimes you've said that, that that's not really a great way to, to do budgets, what it does is when you're looking at actual lines and you're making adjustments to those actual lines, what you're doing is a, in a fair and a balanced and an appropriate sort of prudent way to make cuts and live for a better day. We, th obviously, uh, nobody likes to deal with cuts and, and uh, certainly uh, the reduction in force that's been proposed is certainly not optimal. Everybody that works for the school is important. They have a place of importance. I don't think anybody in this room would deny that. Okay? But in tough times, you do have to cut back. And what I think this represents is a way to stay true to uh, keeping a quality education going, but unfortunately, making reduction in force to administration and support staff and of course the resulting administration and support staff who will be left will have to learn to do more with less. We understand that, but of course that's what everybody does in tough times. Whether you're at home in your home budget or whether you're <coughs> dealing with it at work, we're all learning to live and to do more with less. So I think that's, a, that's an appropriate way to go about it. And the other thing is is the actuals and the cuts, the uh, resulting cut being a, a 2.4% reduction is very, very appropriate in a very down economy. And that's what this is doing. And uh, not only do I hope that the committee will use this as a floor upon which to, to start the discussion tonight, this, this uh, 2.4, by the way, does incorporate 
the other changes. That's the way I understood anyway. It incorporates the changes that were made in a previous meeting. I want you to know that. Um, so it, it does incorporate that. So that's a net, that's a net reduction. Um, but more importantly, and, and Scott, this is to a point you've made uh, before too, as opposed to piecemealing the uh, proposal on the table, I would move that uh, with some Q&A, Mr. Chair, that we move to t take a vote on this in a holistic sort of way as a, f as a resulting floor, and then after that, uh, give all, everyone here an opportunity to, to go line by line and to make other proposals. <coughs> Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'll start the list. I'll have comments before we get there. I've got Keith. I've got Paul. Anybody before I... I don't plan on cutting this off anytime soon. Uh, one of the things procedural-wise that we have agreed upon is that um, there's one swing at the apple, and that's one of the reasons why I uh, made sure that none of the motions on the 14th were part of this is because that would be another swing at the apple. I'm still going through that. The motion stands as it said with the agreement on the table that I've accepted it with the stipulation that I can balance to it. Okay, so if I go through the detail and I can't balance to it and there's some minor adjustments, the minor adjustments will take hold without the committee's with the committee's approval, that's what I will do. That way, otherwise, Annette, we're going to sit here for the next half hour while I put this in the computer and make sure it fits. So without that, we'll go to that method. Now, Mr. Chairman, would you like the electronic version? Um, that makes it easier for you? It would make it easier, not necessarily right now, but maybe okay. after. Because uh, I've already got it placed for numbers in each column, and I'd have to do a VLOOKUP and things, which would be fun, but I want to need to pay attention to what's going on, too. Given that, one slice of the apple, you all know that we have agreed that we can amend motions and we can amend amendments. That doesn't mean there's only one amendment, which means if someone looks through here, picks something, I'm not going to pick anything and say, gee whiz, you know, I would like this on that. And it doesn't even have to be part of this. It can be something different. I would like it to be germane to this motion, okay? I would not like to go outside the motion, meaning if there's I'm going to rephrase what I said because I said it wrong. If the line item that you want to amend is not part of this motion, it can't be amended because it's not on the table to be amended. Okay? So if once this goes through, um, if it goes through where it passes, it's done. None of these accounts get looked at again until after the public hearing. If it doesn't pass, then we can go back, okay, and, and do it. Everything's kind of open. Um, unless, yeah, that it, otherwise than that, you can't, we can't go any further. We can't just not do it and then say everything's off. That doesn't make sense. Is that, committee understand? Is that your understanding as my understanding is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then given that, if I think of anything else as we go through, I'll pipe in. I've got Keith and Paul on the list, and Scott. Keith. Hey, hey. Um, I'm going to run down all my points at once rather than banter back and forth. Um, I'm going to disagree with Guy Karen that his motion won't affect the uh, students and the students are still winners. When you reduce admin, you reduce supplies, you reduce maintenance, you do affect it. Um, all. We have significant increases in our teachers' contract salaries. We have significant increase in our benefits. We haven't increased our budget by as much as our contractual obligations are. Um, I have a question to ask for your consideration. What is it that the Gosstown School District I is not or is doing in the education of our children that is not fundamentally sound? I don't think anyone here at this table has ever come up with such evidence to say we're not being fundamentally sound with the education of our children. Tax rates have been very stable over the last five years in Gosstown. Scott has shown that unless you're living on the waterfront, everyone sitting at this table has had a slight tax decrease over the years. Um, let this, last year, this committee, after the budget hearing, said we need to listen to the public. Ten people had come forward at the public hearing um, in favor of reducing the tax, the budget, um, in order to lower the tax rate. This year, by nearly a three to one ratio, people in this community have been coming forward saying to support the school district's um, budget. 
Um, I find it to be a bit uh, hypocritical that last year, yes, we listened to the public. This year, we're not. We're going to turn the deaf ear to them. That's a concern for me. Trust. That issue has been mentioned by several people here. Um, I have a hard time <coughs> understanding why you would expect the Goffstown School Board and the taxpayers to trust you when it has been clear over the last few years that several members of this committee have been meeting outside of this um, forum, have been making decisions, um, and are in violation of the state's right to know law. That's what I'd a concern. like to do is stick to the debate on the motion. That's outside the purview of the motion. Okay. I guess I, I would just conclude that, <coughs> you know, John Burt likes to say I was elected for a reason. I think we're all elected for a reason, um, especially the school board and this committee. We're elected to listen to what the community as a whole is publicly saying and sharing. And I think it's time that this committee start listening to what the public is saying this year, just as they did last year, and act accordingly. I'll end it with that then. Paul? Uh, yes. It's been remarked that the tax rate has been stable over the past few years, and it, it has. Uh, that doesn't mean that we want it to go up. Um, and all that this motion is attempting to do is prevent it from going up. Um, <clears throat> I support this motion because I think it would produce a responsible budget one that would provide a real alternative to the default budget, which would be a novelty that I think would be a welcome sight on the ballot this year. Um, <clears throat> and the rationale of keeping the tax rate level, I think, is both prudent and non-arbitrary. Um, and so it's also been remarked that <clears throat> no one has any evidence of any unsound call it educational spending policy um, <coughs> well for the better part of a year I've been doing research to see if what the nature of the relationship is between education spending and performance um, and on on my side for my part I haven't been able to identify much evidence of that nature um, I think speaking for a moment on the type of motion that this is I think I prefer this kind of motion, which is a bulk one, to the kind of line-by-line -line, uh, motions we've been making. Um, part of the reason for that is I think that line-by-line -line process, while I support it in theory, sometimes it implies that we have administrative control, which obviously we certainly don't. Um, <clears throat> so I pr prefer this methodology, um, even though I've been supporting line-by-line -line motions because as long as the bottom line is above where I think it ought to be, I'll support a reduction. Um, lastly, I'd like to point out to those watching that the budget that we produce tonight is subject to change after public hearing by us and at the deliberative session by any registered voter. Um, and I believe that you know, the public has recourse to procedures to modify this budget uh, and ultimately recourse to the ballot box where they can choose the default <coughs> budget if they prefer that. Um, so I think, I, I feel that the, the school board's interest is adequately represented in the default budget. It is less than they requested, but in this particular year, I feel that that's already represented on the ballot. And I feel that tonight, the only way that we could deny people a choice would be to not make enough reductions, to give them that other choice. Um, <coughs> And now, I, I believe that the direction of this committee this year has been in tune with the public mood. Uh, there are those who disagree. And so, you know, if, if I'm wrong about that assessment, and I could be, you know, um, like I said, the public has recourse. And I don't think that the default budget <coughs> will be chosen, because like I said, I think, you know, our decisions thus, thus far have been well informed by public sentiment. But it's important to note that no one step in this process <coughs> ends the debate until the election <coughs> happens. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, just want to, you know, make, make one uh, quick statement, and I want to acknowledge Guy for the, for the work that you did. I respectfully disagree with it, but what I do respect is that you did spend an awful lot of time and you justified, in your opinion, where you felt uh, the best interest lied in that balance. So we can, we can agree and disagree, but you put in a ton of work, and I think you backed up with what you said, uh, with what your, your opinion is. Um, just a couple of points. Um, for one, from a procedural perspective, I would concur that it is very time consuming to go line by line and page by page through that budget. Um, I would personally prefer to go 
uh, in a six six step process here, going through Bartlett, Maple Avenue, Glen Lake School, Mountain View, rather than doing one bulk thing. And I think that the motions that I'm sorry, the the information that Guy provided will allow us to do that. And that's my personal preference for what it's worth. My my uh, I had a uh, just a general comment, and that is. Um, from some new information that we've just received this evening, it's uh, it appears as though it's a $1.7 million um, reduction would be needed to get to a level funded school tax rate. That's from the email, Dan, that I think you sent out this evening. Um, I don't, I, you don't have to say yes or no. I just, but uh, and this one represents a, a two point, almost a $2.4 million. So perhaps that can be reconciled this evening. Um, Thirdly, with regard to you know economic conditions, and, and surely for those who are unemployed right now or underemployed, um, it's not good. Um, but the economic data that we do have, which uh, is an apples to apples comparison across the country, shows that Goffstown's unemployment rate, as it currently stands this month, is 4.1%. Um, union leader reports, uh, not Mr. Klesnick, but um, Mr. Pace, I believe, wrote the article saying that half of the jobs that were lost in New Hampshire from the recession have been uh, gained back. Also shows that New Hampshire is now, uh, per census data, the wealthiest per capita income state in the entire country. So where I'm not saying that we should be going on a, on a spending spree. I just want to offer an alternative that I do not believe, in my personal opinion, that we are in dire economic straits in the town of Goffstown. Do we have reason to be conservative and be cautious and concerned? Yes. I just don't think that we are in extremely dire straits. Um, I want to clarify or correct what uh, Mr. Allard said um, with regard to uh, tax rates. I, uh, it has been relatively stable. There have been ups and downs over the last five years, um, and it is not just people um, who have uh, around this table who live on the on the lake. There are some folks here who saw some modest increases of say uh, a couple of hundred dollars increase in their tax bill <coughs> from say five years ago. But there are also some people around this table who had a little bit more, and we had seen we had. There are some around the table who have had um, a decrease in their tax bill. So, um, I make no mistakes about it. I have I have served on the school board. Uh, I have two children in the system. Um, I don't know everyone's lot around this table. I know some of you I know personally, and and uh, you may not have kids, or you may decide to educate them at home and not partake in uh, the school system. Um, but I think that the educational, uh, the quality of education that we provide to our students is paramount. And it's an investment in our, in not only in this community, but it's an investment in our country. And in a time in which we are a little bit concerned about where we're headed, um, education to me is, is an expense. And if I'm gonna go and uh, pay for something, um, education, me personally, is critical. And uh, I think we owe that to our children. We owe that to the future of our country because these are the children um, who are going to be paying the taxes in the future, and they're going to, and I, I see it as almost a national security issue too, where we have to have our best and brightest, and we have to challenge ourselves better. So um, I just want to again thank Guy for his um, very hard work here. I personally would like to see it done in six increments by building uh, rather than one lump sum. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair, point of order. Yes, Bill. I, I mean, uh, as a point of order, do you have an inquiry yes, on procedures? Yes. If anybody else around this table chooses to raise their hand and talk about the economics of our economy, uh, of our, our state and government, are, are you going to allow that to happen? Because as the point long is as you're tying it in to the reason you're trying to debate and get to, to a certain level, okay? It, it, if we're going to go way too far outside of that, then perhaps not. If it's going to go elaborate and way over, I haven't heard anything yet that, that's really gone over the top. From my opinion, I mean, we're, we're look, looking at it, but if you start going on to, you know, three <coughs> minutes, but you're not tying it back to saying this is why, you know, this here or that there, uh, I'm going to allow it. And if you, if you think you're hearing something that's not, you can always choose to have a point of order during the conversation. And I and I will. Well, I was trying to be respectful of the person speaking, but uh, honestly, if we're going to cite one or two economic indicators and as as, as some okay. kind of factual and. and it disregard all the rest of the economy and all the rest of the indicators we all live in. I think that's a little deceptive, and that's and all that's I'm trying why, to say here. Okay, you, and you gave me four minutes in the introduction yep. to speak about economy, and you just gave six months, six six minutes, to talk about little pieces of the economy without the proper context. That's the reason why I'm bringing it up. Um, 
there's more to economy than employment. And uh, okay, it's, and if you that's want an unfair to addition of the economy. So in, in the list, when we get to you, if you want to pull that in for your reason to do what you're doing and it's working but remind the committee I mean there are certain rules we can do calling the question different things if you believe we're going down the wrong path and it's not pertinent the discussion isn't pertinent to the motion on the floor um, we can be very I'm trying to think of the right name gentlemanly is the word I'm thinking of and just raise our hands and just say mr. chairman point of order and, and the speaker would stop I'll get your point of order. <coughs> if it gets nasty, then, then I get nasty. But if we want to talk about it and sing with the relevance, I, that's totally what we're up with. That's what we're for. Because sometimes <coughs> it just works better that way. Okay? We're good with that? Next on my list is Mr. Burt. Then I have Bill Bates and then Bill Gordon. John, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I support this bill or this amendment or, and the reason I do is because uh, I want to thank um, Paul Allgross for pointing most of what I was going to say out and that is giving the voters a true choice because bottom line they can elect to do the default budget if they so choose or they could stay with a level tax funded budget. Um, and one of the, and, and I want to thank Mr. Allard, my good friend, is uh, he is right, absolutely right. Uh, I am listening to the voters, and apparently he must be talking to different voters to the three to one than I am because the three, or really it's about nine to one, <coughs> emails and phone calls and people that I see on the street are telling me please give us a real true choice and by approving this it will give a true choice to the voters of saying you know what this year I want my taxes to stay level or they can say well we'll go with the default uh, so I want to thank you Mr. Allard for pointing that out um, Just very little, and the other reason I'm supporting this is I stopped at the tax collector and she was very helpful on giving me this information. It was requested by a resident in town, um, but I want to bring it up here. There are about 600 plus taxes that were paid late this year. 202 of them, according to the sheet, uh, the sheet that she gave me, or in lean or going to lean. That's up 25% from last year. In two th uh, I'm sorry, this was 2009 figures. I apologize. 2008 was 162 went to lean. But she says the average is about 600 um, of this year that were um, paid late. Uh, she said there are a lot of escrows that are paying taxes. Um, so she said, uh, you know, that does help pay the taxes but people are hurting out there um, so please support this budget to really give the voters a true choice and if somebody in here can answer this question I would appreciate it at some point I was just curious of the Bartlett impact um, I do have the others uh, like uh, the middle school it was a uh, plus 2.87 percent and and I just want to know what the Bartlett one was. Thank you. Mr. Bates? What is it? Uh, I was just going to say, if you go to the Bartlett page, um, the, uh, and, and Guy and I worked together on, on some of these numbers, and, and I just want people to know that the, aside from what uh, John just said in terms of listening to the public, uh, which, which I have done, and I have received both for and against, um, mind you, so I don't want people to think it's one-sided at all. But I, I just want to say this has been constructed in the economy we live in. Uh, and the economy we live in is more than just unemployment. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I have, I'm not going to refute an unemployment figure right now for Goffstown. That's great. But Goffstown's part of a greater economy. That's why this is being, 
this was taken into account. The, the greater economy is the one that uh, people in this a lot of people in this town are not just unemployed, but there's many more people who are underemployed. That means you can't get enough work even though you are working. And those are figures that aren't, aren't reported. And there's many other economic indicators in terms of uh, uh, household income and, and figures on uh, personal income growth. And I could go on. There's many indicators that economists uh, take together when they're looking at this. But you all live with this every day. I mean, I go to Hannaford and I see people, you know, uh, they're counting out change to buy groceries or, or paying with food stamps or whatever it is, you feel it around you. <coughs> you don't need me to tell you how bad the economy is. And the only other thing I'm say about the economy, and there are other indicators that we need to look at, the, probably the biggest one you, you all have to be concerned with is the one that I keep hearing that's going to go on in the new, in the new legislative center session this year, and that is we're, this state, like other states in the country, are dealing with a huge budget, budget deficit, and there is going to be <coughs> impact to the town of Goffstown. And if we create a budget that increases spend when we all know that there's going to be cost shifting going on from the state down to us, that is foolish. You don't create a budget that way when you know there's a train coming down the track and you know there's going to be cost shifting uh, up in Concord coming right back to Goffstown. So please, it's not only the unemployment figure right now. It's a lot of other things. It's foreclosures. They're at an all-time, uh, they surpassed last year's foreclosures in New Hampshire to date, by the way. And there's lots of other things, but that's how this budget was constructed, with an eye towards the current economy, many other indicators besides unemployment, and the fact that the state's going to be dealing with somewhere between a $680 and an $800 million deficit, last time I heard. And there's going to be cost shifting coming to Goffstown. So don't look at a budget increase this year when you know that's going to happen. Please don't do that. That's foolish. You're hurting all the taxpayers if you do that. Thank you. Mr. Gordon, okay. Ivan on the list. <coughs> Goffstown is a community. Children are part of our community. The elderly are part of our community. The employed. <coughs> The underemployed and the unemployed. They're all members of this community. And we need to pull together for the community. I just got my thing from Social Security. I got a zero raise, <coughs> and I'll be getting $90 less this year. Ninety dollars might seem like a trivial amount of money. That's that's the money. That's the amount of money, or somewhere near that, that an awful lot of people down <coughs> in Medford Farms and uh, places like that are looking at, and they are down to having to make a decision between buying their blood pressure medication or paying their tax. And I don't think it's fair to ask all of our community to support what amounts to less than 20% of our community in a business as usual or better situation. <coughs> if I had my way, I think wages should be frozen, but that's not what we did with it. Please support this motion. Ivan? Yeah, I also uh, support this motion. <clears throat> and I want to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, echo Scott that uh, I'm in awe of the time and talent it takes to do all this. And I think the community is well served by this kind of effort. <clears throat> and uh, Bill Bates, Bill. <laughs> had taken a couple of things I wanted to say. This cost shifting, I think, is uh, very important to uh, look at. Uh, Ten years ago, the uh, school budget was $19 million, and now it's approaching 38 So it's close to doubled, 
in 10 years, and somebody's paying that. Somebody is paying that money. Now, we have indeed had good luck with uh, the state and the federal government kicking in funds. So the property tax hasn't gone up as much if we had to assume all of that ourselves. But if that cost <coughs> shifting shifts from the state basis and on a federal basis, then we need to be on alert. And I think uh, Bill also brought up a point that I wanted to say, the uh, Social Security. I mean, we have a lot of residents on Social Security, and this is the second year <coughs> for zero. And all our military, we certainly have people in uh, Gosstown in the military and in our country, there's a huge number. They are in their second year with no pay increases. And likewise, and I, I'm a little confused on the federal government budget, but I understand they're proposing a three-year freeze on wages. So this, this wage freeze thing is coming down the pike. And I think we're operating in the court of public opinion. I mean, people are watching and listening. And in the court of <coughs> public opinion, the voters are the jury. And I'm sure the school board will make a tremendous presentation and present the status quo and you know, present that case very professionally and reasonably. And I think there's precedent to present the opposite point of view, <coughs> to give a different perspective. And I think the Budget Committee should take up that charge and, and present as many facts professionally that represents a different opinion. And the voters get to choose. That's how democracy works. And it's not personal. And uh, we can all go off and uh, eat cookies or drink beer and be friends. Thank you. Well said. Christy? Um, I have a clarification. I checked my email. It did not get your latest thing that Scott was referring to. So for it, us right, currently to be level funded, um, it's not <coughs> the 2.4. What was the $700,000? As a point of order, the and usually I don't answer questions. I but it's a point of order it. that's part of what I said when I started the meeting, not including what we did on December 14th, okay? An additional one it, from the numbers that I have at the moment, which includes the school board returning $200,000 to the taxpayers, okay? Um, I would have said 400000 but we don't know what it is. I'm not sure what it is. So you take that in consideration. We heard 400,000, 200,000 in reserve fund balance, 200,000 in unreserved. It's only the unreserved fund balance that gets turned back to the taxpayers. The reserve fund balance is reserved for something else. So using that 200,000 number, it would be w an additional $1,707,703. That's the calculation that I have at the moment. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, but let me just double check it because I'm seeing the school board at the same level and that would not be accurate. Oh, yes, it would because they are taking the 200,000 and I have, hang on for a second. Okay, yes, 1,707,703. That's my best. Point of order, Scott, or you yeah, on the list? Yeah, just a question. Okay. That, the, that would be 1,707,000. That number would be above the 203,376 <coughs> cuts we've already made at, on, on uh, 12 That is correct. That's correct. Okay. So, so it's a total of about uh, one, in order to get to level fund, it would be a total reduction of approximately $1.9 million. I can tell you that. Would be one nine one one zero seven nine. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Do you have further comments, Christy? No, I just wanted that clarification. Thank okay. you. Okay. I've got Dick on the list. Anybody else? Okay, John. Anybody else? Dick, you have the floor. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I sit here and listen to everybody and what's being said, I kind of have to concur. I was unsure when I came here, and I haven't talked to any, any of these members and put any figures out to anybody. I had my own figures here. And looking at what was passed out, I noticed several of the items I had listed, which amounted to about $250,000, were already in this list, so I wouldn't want to be changing anything. But I have, to, I have to stop and I have to think about what I hear about the education system in Gosstown. The kids, the children, the, the adult children that come out of our school system, and having been here for a good amount of years and graduated from high school here and gone to the white school where there was two classes in every room over there from one through six, and I have to think about it, and I know some kids that came out of school back in the 70s that couldn't even read when they were in junior high, and they thought that was terrible. But that, that's been corrected, if I'm not mistaken. And I look at all the kids today, and I see where they go, and I see the ones behind them where they've come from and where they went, and there's doctors and there's lawyers, <coughs> and there's firemen, and there's policemen, and, and, and uh, teachers, and, and on and on, you know? And I say to myself, I think we're doing a pretty good job. Yes, you can always make something a little better. And then I hear about the tax rate. You know, my taxes have gone up. They say they're level. Well, if $500 in over a three-year, four-year period is level, I guess I don't know how to figure that. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody can show me that I am. Uh, there's a lot of old people in the town of Gosta, and they they are hurting. You know, they're trying to stay in their house. They're paying fuel bills. Stop and think about it. You know, you go back 10 years and your fuel bill was $1,000 a year in a simple little house. Today it's, you know, up close to 2000 And people that retired, they retired when they retired on what they thought they could live on. And today, they're struggling. And a lot of them have sold their house and gone other places, and, and a lot of them uh, are still struggling. Now, I'm sure they saved some money. That's how they can struggle and get by. <coughs> and, and the kids take care of them. But I really believe, lastly, but I really believe that the kids in Gosstown over the past 25, 30 years have got a pretty good education. And I'm going to say that I sat on the budget committee in the 1970s, and the budget was smaller. And in them days, we went through the same talk as we're doing tonight, probably not quite as heavy. <laughs> and, you know... We came out, and they got a 5% increase, or they got a 4% increase in the school budget. And over the past few years, you know, the school budget's gone up, and we've done the same thing as we're doing tonight. And the way things are, I think that this is a pretty good proposal. And I really think that they could run the school system for the next year on it. Uh, I'm sure they will say no, and there's a lot of things in here that they want to increase this, this figures by, but you know, there comes a point in time when everybody has to make a decision, whether they're the administrator of the school or a member of the budget committee, and we're trying to do a job, and we have said, I haven't said, uh, it's been said by this, re this uh, proposal that Here's a figure, and it's not, it's not going backwards, you know. It's, it's staying pretty much where we are, with a little bit of leeway in it this year. And maybe by the time next year rolls around, after for the following year, times will be better and we can catch up a little bit. But I also look at one other thing, and, you know, you mentioned you're going to put special article in for two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars and 
I commend you if that's all it is. The, the taxpayers can put in some, some special articles that we don't know about, both in the school budget and the town budget. And all of a sudden, you know, we can have a big increase because of special articles. So where we stand right now is we're in a pretty good position this year, I think, to, to, to kind of hold the line and get the job done. Thank you, Dick. John, Dylan, Thank you have you, the floor. Mr. Chairman. Um, I thought Keith raised a really good question, um, maybe partly rhetorical, maybe not asking, you know, he'd like to hear from members of the committee what, you know, I, I guess essentially what criticism do they have of what the, what the Goffstown schools are doing? Or, you know, tell us what's, what's you know, n not working or not good and, and where we ought to make these cuts. And, um, you know, I, I think that's interesting to think about. Um, uh, although, you know, I would say it's the school board and um, the SAU's job to think about education, think about students, think about what, what they, what's needed to educate our students and what services <coughs> and programs are needed. It's not their job, and or at least, and an, you know, I don't think it's realistic for them to think about what tax impact their programs are having, or or to make it anywhere near their first priority to to lessen the impact on on taxpayers. But it is the first priority of this committee to do that, I believe. Um, and I, my, you know, the, I think the reason we listen to the to the departments and and the school board and get as much information from them as we can is so that we can make responsible reductions or increases, responsible uh, suggestions or changes. Um, um, in fact, I would say, you know, I think everybody here when they thinks about it, uh, at least I know many, many people uh, give kudos to Goffstown School District for, for the job they do. I mean, if you look at the simple fact um, that students in Goffstown, uh, per student, the rate is lower than the state average. So we're in, in, in that perspective, we, we slightly underfund or underfund our, our students already, and yet um, the performance is, is pretty good on, on many indicators, and I think uh, the SAU's presentation showed that. So, you know, I, I don't think you can, cri you know, to answer Keith's question again, I don't think you can criticize the job they're doing. I mean, I, I think a lot of people think you know any budget, 30, any budget the size of 35 million, must always have room to be to be scrutinized and tightened up, uh, readjusted uh, to do things more efficiently. But again, they are doing more with less already, um, and I think we have to keep that in mind. I think we have to give them credit for that, um, and I think it makes it harder. It gives us a harder job to scrutinize, to suggest cuts. Um, but you know my other uh, so I, you know I'm speaking to this motion and I think I'm 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 mostly in favor of it. Um, it 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 maybe goes a little more than I want to see, especially if it's if 2.3 <coughs> million is more than the than a 1.9 million to get a level tax rate because that's actually um, you know I, again looking out for the taxpayers. I think it it is a good goal. It's partly my goal and, and the folks I talk to of having an option, uh, as has been said, that, that uh, taxpayers get an option whether to ha not have an increase or, or to support an increase if that's what they want to do. They should be given that choice. Um, I do think it's hard to swallow and to understand. You know, in fact, to answer that question again, it, if there's any criticism about the school budget, I would offer this. How is it sustainable um, that what they propose would be for a modest size home about a $350 increase on top of what's our, you know, we're already paying. And that sort of begs the question, well, what, what kind of annual increase to property taxes do you expect? $100, $200, $300? Um, I guess it's more realistically a percent, 2%, 3%. But a year ago, we thought uh, taxes were going to go way up. Uh, to the tune of about $800 for a modest <coughs> home. Um, and that didn't pan out because there was $2.7 million given back, and a lot of that was state and federal funding. So I think, uh, you know, one, one reason this, this decrease appeals to me is because I do think 
nobody realistically expects <coughs> more help from the federal government in terms of era funds. There's already huge deficits at the federal level and at the state mm -hmm. level as well. Um, <coughs> most people probably don't know the state contributes already seven million dollars to our 35 million dollar budget and if they're increasing decreasing that guess who's going to pay it the taxpayers um, so you know that that encourages me to entertain the wisdom of, of making cuts modest cuts um, I would like to hear before I would fully support this, more of guys thinking on the reduction of the personnel positions. Uh, I'd like to hear any qualitative information or suggestions he has on that. And I'd like to hear, hear more discussion on those, those cuts. But uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Bates, you have the floor, and I get Ivan back on the list. <coughs> <coughs> I'd like to move the question. I also saw Christie's hand before I heard the motion. And in our pseudo rules, uh, when the question is called, um, we'll call for the vote. It's non-debatable. If it passes, those on the list get their final say, and then we vote. If it doesn't pass, we continue. So at the moment, Mr. Bates has called the question. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Burt? <coughs> All right, there's a motion on the table to call the question. You understand? If you vote in the affirmative, then Ivan and then Christy will speak, and we will vote without amendment, because there are, uh, unless there's an amendment coming up. Um, otherwise, that if you say no, then we continue to discuss. Okay. Those in favor of calling the question, signify by raising your hand, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nine, six, and fifteen. One abstention. Oh, that would be me. I'm going to call the roll, if you would, please. I'm enjoying hearing this. That's why I'm abstaining. I'll let you guys decide if you want to continue. Um, Bill Bates, yes or no? Yes. Uh, Bill Gordon. Yes. Bill Hart. No. Kathy. Yes. Christy. No. Dick. Yes. Guy. Yes. Ivan. Yes. Jen. No. John Burke. Yes. John Dillon. No. John Heichel. Yes. Keith. No. Paul. Yes. Scott. No. Okay. That motion passes nine six one, which means Ivan will speak, Christy will speak, then we will vote. Ivan, you're on the floor. <coughs> All I wanted to add is that uh, because we're an SB two community. And the RSA 32 applies, and RSA 3210 applies in terms of transferring funds, meaning <coughs> it's a bottom line budget. And, it, and the various departments and governing <coughs> bodies can make adjustments as necessary. So, I mean, these lines to a certain degree aren't sacrosanct, they can be changed as long as the bottom line doesn't change. So, I think there's a lot of freedom or wiggle. Whoop, Room, whatever you want to call it, uh, for the governing bodies and the departments. Take it back here. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Christy, it's okay. I sometimes we take a breath. <laughs> Christy, um, I'm not going to support this motion. I consider myself fiscally conservative, and I was not thrilled with the 5.2 percent <coughs> increase from the school board. Um, I think if we're going to try to level fund, we should get to the actual number it would be to level fund. And <coughs> I would like to see something more in the middle of the compromise where the school board would maybe take suggestions like pay to play to try to appropriate some revenue that way. Um, but for me, this motion is too much, and I'm not going <coughs> to. Thank you, Christy. Guess your turn. Your turn. All right. Uh, you have before you a motion. The motion is to <coughs> reduce the 
current level of the school budget from 35506648 general fund only to 33334789 the 30 and that in, that is a net 2,171,859 and that is from <coughs> that, day, that does not include what we did the other day so the 33334789 would be the net general fund piece of the budget okay you ready for the question if you vote in favor that's what we do and then we go on if you vote against it then we start with more motions either way you understand the question point of order yes Christy uh, can we once this is voted on are we allowed to go back for amendments or is the one time depends on whether it is if it's positive then no because that's what the rules we talked about and before we started this we said you could make amendments <coughs> to this motion while you're in here which meant you could go in there and have taken out some offending cuts that you didn't want so that the modified number could have been less if you had done that um, because they were not changed then we are voting a straight vote kind of up or down on this if it passes then it goes if it doesn't pass we talked if we were doing individual lines and it, it didn't pass and it could be something different same thing here it can still be something different but <coughs> once we pass a number we've discussed it and it came to an agreement on a number and so that number is the number okay um, normally that's what happens any further do you understand the question set before you then those in favor of the reduction so that signify by raising your hand please one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven opposed one two three four abstain uh, that's 15 so I counted wrong that's why we go ahead and we're gonna take a roll call Dan yes Bill Bates yes Bill Gordon yes Bill Hart yes or no neither are you abstaining I suppose I am but I'm not voting period that's abstaining that's the vote abstaining from the vote is an abstention you're the you're the missing key okay <laughs> if you were not in the room then you're it would not be recorded but you're in the room so it's either one way or the other that's Kathy yes Christy no Dick yes guy yes Ivan yes Jen no John Burt yes John Dillon yes John Heichel yes Keith no Paul yes Scott no all right that is 11 for one that motion passes the floor and again subsequent to my completing the administrative work that I have to do on it point of order uh, can Did I finish you vote? <laughs> yes I voted yes okay now I, I was a person okay. um, given that I find any changes I'll let you know but so far I've been able to keep on one two three three pages and it is entirely accurate thus far okay now I have a we have a list of everything are there further motions mr. Burke I don't know how to say it. I guess a motion to uh, allow public comment no that's that's oh, okay. that's not a motion that's the when we go into the uh, committee at this point we oh, still have okay. to finish our job our job is to put forth uh, a budget to public session so okay. at this point if there are no further motions to adjust the numbers I would ask for a motion to put a number to public session uh, are there more motions to modify any of the numbers that we haven't passed Scott uh, since I guess it doesn't matter where the lines come from unless you want me to give you a particular line I would I, um, it's got to be at a minimum function level because that is what adjusts to the MS-27 but I have to make sure that your motion does not touch anything that has already passed and since we've had everything in detail okay you're gonna have to if you if you hit something that is not in a function code that's been touched then I can do it at the function code otherwise than that we're, we're gonna have to check according to our rules can I ask a question point of order sure point of order um, my motion was going to be to um, 
go forward with that 1,911079 number since that is the true level tax rate number. Um, but how I'm going to go about capturing that additional uh, 400 and you would have to find $20, lines that have not yet been affected. In this motion? No, in any motion we've done, which includes last Tuesday and this Tuesday. I have another point of order. You can think about that. I'll go to the bathroom and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't run too far because while you're gone and they put a number to public session. <coughs> so we can't make an adjustment to the bottom line either? Correct. The, the minimum you can do is the MS-27 levels because that is what we are commanded in the statutes to do is supply DRA with the MS-27 and by rules we can't adjust a number that has already been adjusted. So if you come and say I want to adjust uh, 1100 by this amount I will say you got to give me detail because there's a lot of 1100s that got hit. See what I'm saying? Now, does this committee yeah, need a five-minute recess in order to do what it needs to do? Yeah. Um, Dick, are you there? Okay, can you, um, we're going to go into a five-minute recess. Oh, it's Andrew. It's Andrew. Thank you. We're going to go to five, and let me remind the committee and the audience that the no, TV yeah. is not shut off, but the sound is. Am I correct, Andrew? Correct. Okay, we are going to go into recess. Uh, out of our recess. Scott, was there a further <coughs> point of order? Or? No, it was just I want to be on the list to make a motion. Um, and you finished your, your point of else. order? Yep. Okay. All right. There's nothing else I'm going to do. I have pen. I have paper. You want to make a motion, Scott? Sure. Um, in, in the spirit of, of reaching the goal of a, of a level tax rate and, and hitting that number, um, and that number would require a... Could you do me a favor so I can write it down? Tell me the motion first. The, the, you, you have to give me the motion. Yes. What it okay. Is. The motion will be to add. I'm going to just do it in separate schools, unless you want me to do it in one school. I can do it in one school, but, but that kind of your motion. <laughs> I'll just do it in one school to make it easier. Then your motion. Um, add uh, four hundred and sixty-four thousand one hundred and fifty-six dollars to the Goss. Four hundred sixty-four one fifty-six. Yep. To the Goffstown High School teacher salary line. Okay, what number is that? Usually when we hit that, we say and other benefit lines, but and that is not part of your motion, correct? I don't think it needs to be. That's fine, too. I just want to make that unequivocable um, in that whenever we've done a salary line, we've always part part of it. And so in order to anyone listening or reading minutes would know that it was a definitive positive that we did not include benefits to the number you're saying. Okay, so location would be 305. Mm -hmm. The function is 1100, you said regular ed? Sure. Okay, the program would be teachers is, uh, let me look at my lookup notes. 111. Uh, the program number teacher salary, 111. Those are teacher salaries. Okay. And currently, I have to make sure, and I don't think that was touched by anyone. Uh, as a point of order, Guy, do you remember that being in your motion at all? It was not. Okay. And it was not in the motion of the 14th? No. So what I have to do is find that number. find that number on page 36 of the consolidated and it shows 
What was your number, Scott? Uh, two one. I had an addition. Two one four six four one five six was your addition. Four six four one four five six. six four one five six. That's right. I had some extra numbers in here, and it was I was coming up with some astronomical. Four six four one five six. Okay. Yes, the motion sir. on the floor is to increase teacher salaries at the high school in the regular ed program from four million one sixty nine four zero three to four million six thirty three five fifty nine. That represents a four hundred and sixty four thousand one hundred and fifty six dollar increase. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Now, would you speak to your motion, please? Sure. And I don't. I'm, again, it's in the spirit of, of reaching the, the, the true uh, zero impact on the, on the tax rate. Um, I thought that would have been a, an amendment uh, to the original motion. I would have preferred <coughs> to have gone back and gone through Guy's um, sheets and maybe made some amendments to that, but we didn't get an opportunity uh, to do that. Um, I, I, I point believe of order. Of order. Yeah. Okay. I, point of order, you could. Okay. 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 The point of order goes to the chair. Point of rule on a point of order. Order. What your point of order is there was a factual misrepresentation. Yes. I can handle that after. We all had the opportunity of making amendments. We understand that. That was a misstatement, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and, you know, in, in the spirit of also what, what Ivan said, it is a um, the bottom line budget. I would not anticipate that the school board would actually do that. However, they would revisit. Uh, what's in here and uh, make adjustments as necessary. One point that I would like to make is uh, <clears throat> I do think that there are a couple of things that were that were that were in here where I think the money uh, could be made up, and that is I think we're cutting a little bit too deep on the on the maintenance and the custodial side. Uh, we experienced that uh, a decade ago when we went and we we had to rehabilitate and renovate Goffstown High School. We did that. That bill was much larger because we did that same type of tactic where we did not upkeep our, our facilities. And I can tell you, I'm, uh, as a community, we should be extremely proud of, of our custodial and maintenance staff. They do a phenomenal job. If you walk the high school, the middle school, or any of our schools, they're in tremendous shape. You uh, should be proud of them. Um, and I also think in, in terms of these fuel lines, uh, the reason why they're not uh, budgeted the way they are because the, the price of fuel oil has gone up. So I, I think the 464-156 uh, just represents the goal of getting it to a level a level tax rate, which I, I heard was the goal for this committee. So just going to get to that, get that number. Thank you. You're welcome. Keith, you're on the floor. Thanks. Um, I'm going to agree with Scott. You know, if the goal was to level fund the tax rate, we did not do that tonight. Um, I think the community, and I will once again say a three to one ratio, does not want cuts. And when I say the three to one, I'm looking at the people that have come and spoken <coughs> here at the budget committee meeting, have written to the papers. That's where I'm getting my three to one ratio. Um, I think the $464,156, if that was your goal, to level fund the budget, uh, the uh, tax rate, that's the number you need to add back in to meet that, that goal. And thank you. Okay, I have a list. Uh, Guy, Christy, uh, is that Mr. Bates? Yes. And I saw Paul, and I saw Bill Gordon, and without objection from the committee, I believe every, most everyone on the committee would like to speak, so if anybody I have on this list wants to try to call the question, I will not acknowledge it until everybody gets to speak, okay? Guy, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I'm definitely not going to support this motion for a number of reasons. Number one, we all know that this 464000 would never be thrown at a teacher line. Secondly, if it was, it would you, you'd, you're talking about an additional 200000 in FICA, retirement, health, et cetera. So this would really be an addition of six. Hundred and sixty-four thousand. Point of order. The motion clearly stated that it was not going to affect the FICA lines and everything. That is factually correct. Um, even if this motion were to pass, as it was delivered to the chair and accepted, it would not impact the detailed lines of the various items. It would create some kind of challenge. For the accounting staff <coughs> who have
calcul automatic calculations in place. It would not calculate properly, but otherwise than that, it does not affect taxes. Well, the most important reason I'm not going to support this is that the target of a level tax rate took a left turn tonight less than an hour before this meeting was held. The night before we're making our final deliberations, all of a sudden we find out that the school district is suddenly anticipating 600 some odd thousand or or whatever the additional, I, I forgot what the number was. As a point of order, it was 400,000. 400, so in potential. In potential revenue. Well, you know what? I just assume keep that 400,000 as a Jesus factor for the taxpayers. And if it comes in, great. The taxpayers will make out. If it doesn't, then we're right back to the level tax rate. I'm not going to take a chance on an 11th hour, you know, Hail Mary pass that this committee is going to swallow that all of a sudden there's an extra 400,000 <coughs> coming in on the last night that we're making. I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. And I'm not going to support this motion at all. Thank you, Guy. For the committee, administratively, I input the data that I got from Keith's motion and the current spreadsheet. Scott's motion. It's my Scott. Oh, did I say Keith? Yeah. I'm sorry. Keith seconded that. Scott's motion. Um, and it comes as stated uh, using the numbers that I currently have. And I keep saying that every time. Put you on the list. Christy, you're next. Um, I'm going to support Scott's motion. I think, again, the information, if we really wanted to get to a level tax fund, is there. Um, I think this is somewhat of a compromise. I've said all along I'd like to see other ways of generating revenue. Um, I personally supported the town reduction side, which was over a dollar per thousand, stating that I would like to see that money go toward the school side. Um, and I would like, I think this is somewhat of a compromise, perhaps not such a huge reduction. Bill Bates. Yes, um, I, I'm speaking against it only because I, I I, uh, the guy spoke actually the way I was thinking, and th this is an eleventh hour thing that uh, was just presented. Uh, the, sp the spirit of the original thing that was proposed was based on currently available information, and eleventh hour information doesn't necessarily uh, mean that uh, that I can accept that number uh, right at this moment after getting it. Number one, number two. Uh, you know, I think Scott's intentions are great, but quite frankly, um, a good intention, wrong line, uh, because I got chastised this week on an email from a concerned citizen who uh, said to me the fact that we were proposing cuts to teacher, teacher lines <coughs> and how foolish that was because those are uh, contractual obligations. and. I'm sorry, do, doesn't this apply to that as well? If you have a contractual obligation to pay something, even though the intention, I, I agree, your intention is, is well-meaning, that's the wrong line. I mean, we have a contractual obligation to pay them a certain thing and now you're going to pile on top of it? To me, I, I mean, like I said, I, I was getting a lot of flack about uh, last Tuesday's meeting and the fact that some cuts proposed were... Uh, running against a contractual oblig a line that, that represented a contractual obligation of a teacher's salary. So why on earth would we go the other way and do the very thing that people were chastising us for? So I, I speak against it. Paul, you let me write down on the list. You already got me on the list, right? Yes, you are after. I have on the list Paul, then Bill Gordon, <coughs> then Bill Hart, and then Keith, and then Scott. Paul, you have the floor. Yeah, I'm I'm unconcerned with the, the particular line to which this motion is applied, but what does concern me is the the degree of uncertainty that seems to shroud this number that seems to have come out of nowhere um, at the last minute. Um, and I, if I had absolute guaranteed 100% certainty, I might be inclined to support an increase um, perhaps not of the full amount as a kind of hedging our bets against 
the uncertainty that tends to arise year after year. Um, but it, it doesn't seem to me that this has been presented in a way that's, that's consistent with um, a safe increase if, if our goal really is to guarantee against a tax increase. And that's all I have to say. Bill Gordon. Okay. Um, I, I, I feel that it was very. Oh, I'm going to go there. Um, I can't. Support this because the voters have shot. You know, we're going to present a budget in January to the voters, and then it goes to deliberative session. And these numbers are very likely to be changed at deliberative session. We came in with a number that was not available to us until 10 minutes past 6 this evening. What's to say that numbers aren't going to change between now and January or February when the decision is actually going to be made to go on the ballot? So I urge you not to support this motion. Joe Hart. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am going to uh, make an amendment to this motion. Uh, I'm going to. I would like to amend this from the 464-156 to 105,000. Now this is where it gets a little no, I went in the wrong direction. Hang on, guy. You want it to be only a net increase of a hundred and five thousand? That would be correct, Mr. Chairman. So you are reducing the motion by three hundred fifty nine thousand one hundred and fifty six dollars. That would be correct. All right. There's a motion on the floor by Bill Hart to amend the main motion downward by 359 156 for a net 105,000 is there a second by a lack of a second the motion fails we continue with the list key um, I want to address the fact that we determined a $400,000 possible reserve fund balance. It wasn't an 11th hour Hail Mary. We've been telling you since we came in here and did our first presentation, we are doing everything in our power to come up with our revenues and everything else. There's a lot of factors that we could not figure out immediately. Um, we charged the administration to really truly look at our numbers and come up with what do you really feel is going to be left in our budget at the end of the year. We're not even halfway through our budget year, and we've got to come up with this number. It's a very difficult number. We're operating with a budget that's below the default. We were trying to be very cautious on the number that we presented to you. Um, and we've been stating that since November when we made our first presentation. So I don't think it should be a surprise that we made every effort to come up with a realistic number. It's not a guaranteed number. By no means can it be a guaranteed number. If it could be a guaranteed number, I'd tell you so. Um, but it is our best estimate based upon how far we are through the budget, what we see for anticipated revenue on tuition and um, aid from the state and federal government. Um, it was a very difficult number for us to calculate this year. And we, we, that was the number we finally were able to resolve last night at the meeting and come forward. It was a number that was public last night. 
It was a number that we emailed to Dan this morning. It wasn't an 11th hour Hail Mary whatsoever. Thank you. As a guiding notice by the chair, it was emailed to me, but I don't get my email at work, and I didn't get home to get my email until late. And so when I saw it, I forwarded it on to you guys, okay? I, I saw a hand, so I put you on the list. Scott, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, with, with regard to the revenues, um, in my seven years on the school board and, and my 15 years living in Goffstown, I can't recall the time that either the school board or the board of selectmen did not hit a revenue target. Um, if anything, uh, the school board, at least under my tenure with Dr. Lockwood, was extremely conservative on revenues, to which he was often criticized for that. Um, so I think if the school board is coming forth saying they're going to have a $400,000 revenue, then the pressure is on them to bring forth minimally a $400,000 revenue. And I, I, just, like I said, I just can't recall the last time that did not happen. So I, I don't think it, it, it gives me any fear or uh, room for pause because they have consistently done that year after year. They've, and both uh, government bodies have exceeded those, uh, those revenue projections. Um, and also in terms of, um, you know, uh, assurances, and he happens to be here tonight, uh, a letter was sent, I got a copy of it from Senator D'Alessandro that the, uh, the town of Goffstown, the school district, was going to be getting uh, some federal funds, guaranteed federal funds as part of a uh, federal, uh, 250, yeah, 240, 2, 000, that's two, yeah, um, so he, I'm, I'm sure the <coughs> chair can recognize Senator D'Alessandro, but that money has been earmarked for, uh, for Goffstown. And in terms of um, information that happens at the last minute, I mean, we all work in you know, our own lives and in business. New information constantly comes about. If you recall, when we do our budgets, we give you um, what we anticipate will be health insurance increases, and then that becomes you know, very fluid. Um, you know, I could, I could make the argument as an incredible amount of work that this was, I kind of got this at six whatever 45 or seven o'clock tonight didn't really have a whole lot I think Bill you meant you, you know you seem to uh, state that uh, at recess that you didn't really have a chance to review this um, so yeah things happen with budgets but I, I feel very comfortable with what the school board if they're saying it's four hundred thousand that's their obligation to meet that and we shouldn't have to worry about it and if that means that uh, we can you know we can uh, you know, reduce this number of a cut, or reduce the cut by 464,000, then the onus is on them to make sure that revenue holds true, not us. Okay. As, as a corrective measure for the committee members here, we're not talking about revenue per se. We are talking about unreserved fund balance. What that means is we all got our tax bills, okay? What is being funded right now through your tax bill is to completely fund the gross appropriation minus the revenue projections that were set at the tax rate in early October, okay? And what happens when the entire appropriation is not expended, the, ta the revenue has already been brought in, okay, from taxes and other sources. That would then go to offset the next time we calculate re uh, the tax rate. <coughs> So that's what we're talking about. Not to confuse you, but it's not really revenue. It's money. We can almost consider it there. It's your tax dollars that have already been kicked into the kitty, but they didn't spend it. That's what we're talking about. Okay? And, and that has varied. And I think Keith had made it clear, and at the school board last night, they made it clear they cannot guarantee that. I know, Scott, you said it would be up to them to make sure they guarantee it, but it's not really a guarantee. History shows they've met it. Okay, and so I think we can say that as a factual statement. Uh, John Heichel, John uh, Guy, John Dillon, Bill Gordon. Further, and I think we're pretty much getting to most everyone speaking. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, <coughs> I too am not going to. I too am not going to support this motion um, for several reasons, but one. Uh, as recent as this afternoon in uh, caucus in Concord, I was, uh, it was told to us uh, not to anticipate, not to 
not to make any budget based on any uh, anticipated revenue from the state uh, because uh, there is an uncertainty of anything that we may receive. Uh, and that was told to me at 2 o'clock today. So I'm not sure. I, this is the first I've heard of any federal revenue coming in or, or any state revenue that we can count on. Or I certainly don't think there should be any guarantees made at any by anybody. Um, and it seems as though I remember when I was first on the Budget Committee that somewhere we were a million dollars. There was a large amount of money one time. It was one of my first years that we anticipated money coming in. And I remember, I think, I think uh, Mr. Gross was there with us. And I remember that we were short of about a million dollars. It was a lot of money. I may not be the right number. It was six years ago. But um, I, I don't think we should support this motion for several reasons. But one is we can't guarantee any money is going to be coming to our, our way this year. Guy. Um, thanks. Um, Pete said it best, I thought, when he referenced the $400,000 possible. That's a quote. Um, they, the school district cannot guarantee this money. And, you know, it's their obligation to meet that, according to Scott. What if they don't? You know, this committee just, just decided by 1141 that the school district can operate with a two point something percent reduction in their current rate. If, in fact, this 400000 comes in, great. Doesn't mean we have to spend it. Why don't we pass this on or hang on to it, hang on to this amount we've got in the budget in case it doesn't come in. Let's keep the taxpayers in mind here. We've already kept the school and in mind by making a minimal reduction compared to what we had talked about earlier this year. <coughs> None of the teacher lines have been affected by this. And if this doesn't come in, we still have a level tax rate. If the money does come in, my God, the taxpayers might even see a reduction. We don't have to spend it if it comes in. That whole mindset, I think, is wrong. That's why I'm hoping we don't support this. Let's take what we've got to public hearing, get the input from the people there. We still have a chance to revisit this budget the Tuesday afterwards. And then it goes to deliberative, and it's the taxpayers who count anyways, who are going to decide on all of this, not us. I'm done. Mr. Dillon. I think Guy's logic makes sense. Um, I want to support this motion, but the truth is I don't trust the figures. Um, it's been three weeks ago where they were, going to, they were working on cl uh, better revenue figures. Um, it was almost, almost every article I've read or, or, or um, sheet of information a day or two later has corrections to it or has one piece of information that's wrong. Um, it's a real challenge figuring out these budgets, but it, it seems late in the game. I don't understand um, how it can be. I, I don't trust it, so I'm against the motion. Bill Gordon. Bill Gordon passes. Christy. I just want to reiter reiterate, we did have a reduction on the town side significant reduction of her dollar. Um, you know, if, if there can't be some compromise and some balance of what we're trying to do, then come deliberative, you're probably not going to get anything of what the reduction that you want. I, I think in the, you just have to have a balance there and you have to both compromise and find a, a middle ground that makes sense to the voters, because that is our job, to give them a, a prudent figure, and I think this is a, a, a good figure. Scott? And I have Bill Bates on the list. I just want to say that, that the action that we have taken over the last couple of days, minimally 14 individuals in the school district will lose their jobs. And I heard on the town side from members of this committee that they didn't want to see anybody lose their job. And I recognize when you're in tough uh, economic straits or you want to get a, a lean and mean budget that that's inevitable. But I don't want anybody in this room to lose, uh, lose uh, the fact that 14 people minimally are going to lose their jobs in the town of Gopstown. 14 people who may be the head of a household, who 
uh, may rely upon this income to support their families. And when you talk about that $438,000, um, that could be six or seven or eight people who are no longer are going to be um, collecting a paycheck, <coughs> who are going to go on unemployment, going to be costing us money, um, and going, all that is is a ripple effect. So I just want to put some some you know these are these are actual people, folks, and and I would like and I've always tried to subscribe to in the least resort trying to give people pink slips. And um, a lot of these folks are administrators. A lot of these folks are custodians. Um, I don't know about you, but you know, you do need leadership in your schools, and you do need your your schools to be clean, um, and those are very important things. So, m minimizing the layoffs and and uh, terminations is is important to me, and I I personally would rather see that than return four hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars to the taxpayers. Bill Bates, call the question. And we have discussed it long enough. I will accept that as a calling of the question. I do have Jen on the list. Okay, the court is there a second on calling the question? I'll second it. John Burt. The question is called. There's no debate. Basically, we're going to vote. If you vote in the affirmative and it passes, we will hear from Jen and then we will vote on this <coughs> motion. If you vote no and that passes, then we continue discuss or debating. Okay? Mm -hmm. Got the question? All those in favor of calling the question, signify by raising your hand, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm not sure if I got you. Fourteen. Against. Any abstentions? So Jen and Christy, you were the only two that said no. Right? Everybody else is a yes? Okay. Which means the most is <coughs> the motion. The motion passes. Jen, you have the last debate. Um, <coughs> Good. I just, I just wanted to further um, Scott's point again about people losing their jobs. Um, and I know for me personally, these positions that have been cut um, tonight and previous night, these are positions that I am not I do not know what the full job responsibilities are concerning those positions. I also want to just bring to your awareness that some of these positions, especially on the administrative, upper administrative level, can affect the accreditation of our schools at some level, and that is something that we need to consider and take very, very seriously because I think it would be horrific to see that happen in our school district. So I just wanted to give you that food for thought as we vote. The question has been called. We're done debate. Are you ready for the question? Question is, shall we increase the teacher salary line in at the high school in regular education from four million one hundred sixty nine thousand four hundred and three dollars to four million six hundred thirty three thousand five hundred and fifty nine dollars. That re represents a four hundred and sixty four thousand one hundred and fifty six dollar increase. You all understand the question? Sorry, one more time, Mr. Chairman. The total numbers? Just the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a pen in your hand. It's in his head. <laughs> if you're playing with me, I'm having a very fun time with it. The motion in front of you is to increase the teacher <coughs> salary line, definitively not to include benefits, only teacher salary at the high school regular education program from four million one hundred sixty nine thousand four hundred three dollars to four million six hundred thirty three thousand five hundred fifty nine dollars that represents a four hundred sixty four thousand one hundred and fifty six dollar increase you ready for the question those in favor of the motion signify by raising your hands one two three four five opposed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven and five is sixteen. Therefore, I will do a roll call. Dan, no. Bill Bates. No. Bill Gordon. No. Bill Hart. No. Kathy. No. Christy. Yes. Dick. No. Guy. No. Ivan. No. Jen. Yes. John Burt. No. John Dillon. Yes. John Heichel. No. Keith. Yes. 
Paul. No. Scott. Yes. Okay. Motion. Did I go backwards? Yes. The motion fails. Five to eleven. Um, which means our numbers right now, where we stand, is a general fund budget of thirty-three million three hundred thirty-four thousand seven hundred eighty-nine dollars. We have a federal fund twenty-one budget of six hundred seventy thousand. We have a food services budget of one million. One hundred and one thousand seven hundred and ninety six dollars for a total school budget of thirty five million one hundred six thousand five hundred eighty five dollars. Are there any more motions to modify the budget? Do we have any motions to bring the numbers that I just said to public session? I see Guy. And I'll second it. Whatever. I saw your hand first. All right. Well, we're Are we just seconding? Yep. Okay. Sorry, I looked left. Okay, the motion is made by Guy, seconded by Bill Hart to bring the numbers I just expounded to public session. Do you need me to read these again? You ready for the question? Are ye looking to bring the 3510558, excuse me, 3510685 to public session? Please signify by raising your hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Opposed? 2. That's 16. Okay. Now I am going to mark Keith and Scott as no and everybody else as yes. This is our final meeting. We have done the town to go to public hearing. We've done the school to go to public hearing. We have done both water district, vil village water district going to public meeting. Without further statement, I'm going to close the deliberations. That will be it. We have our final number to go to public hearing. Nothing else? Okay. We are done deliberations. Okay. I'm now going to move into a public comment time. Okay. If there's anybody, and I'm going to recognize Senator D'Alessandro. He did send me an email and requested if he could speak and if he wants to. Um, Can we move, Dan? Yeah, if you want to come, there's a little microphone on top there. You can come over on this side. And and that that's for anybody. We, as Senator D'Alessandro comes up, if anybody wants to make a public comment tonight, that's, that's fine. I'd like to limit it to a very short because our real public Hearing time will be on January, tell me people, is 12th. it the 12th? 12th. A snow date of the following day, it'll be at the Goffstown um, Heber Auditorium. Is it still called the Heber Auditorium? Yes, it is. <laughs> Can I make a, a yeah. um, we actually are going to provide free daycare for the children that night. We okay. have volunteers to do that. Keith, for Keith says there's um, going to be some volunteers to uh, have daycare mm -hmm. on at the uh, budget hearing public uh, on the 12th of January. So thank you. To Thank you for waiting. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And first of all, thanks for the opportunity to be to be with you and to, to listen to the comments uh, about a very significant subject. Uh, education is fundamental to a democratic society. Uh, I've been to the Goffstown School. I was at Goffstown High School last week, where the students did a magnificent, magnificent presentation, where they raised food and raised money uh, for the needy. Uh, and, uh, 1,200 students were in the gymnasium. They were orderly. They were well disciplined. They were well controlled. They were well managed. And they raised uh, 4,000 pounds of food and $7,000. Uh, that's a tribute to everybody in the community, and I think it's indicative of the kind of education that they're receiving at the high school. I visit the schools every year. I visit every school in the district every year. I think the education being uh, administered here is sound. Uh, the one one <coughs> is in, in the Bartlett School, and it's the construction of the school. It's a very difficult school to teach in, uh, and you've made some changes there. But the, the physical plant is difficult, and it's an old school. I, I can remember um, years and years ago visiting the Bartlett School, and you had your old uh, principal there, when Skip was the principal there, and, uh, and obviously it, uh, 
kind of change in the system. I just want to report on one thing. That $230,000 is real money. That money was part of a $20 million discretionary grant from the federal government. Actually, it was $40 million. <coughs> the state kept $20 million, and $20 million was distributed to all of the school districts. Manchester got $1.6 million based on the formula. Scottstown got the $200,000. That's real money. That's federal money. That's, that's, I sent a letter to you, Scott, and I also sent a letter to the superintendent of schools. That's, that's money that you can use in, uh, in education. So that's, that's real money. That's not a joke. That, that money is real. That money is ha has been distributed. So that's, that's real. Uh, you know, with, with regard to the, to the state money, re remember that 40% of the money the state receives gets back to the communities in, in one form or another. And I've got the lineup of all the monies that came back to Goffstown in fiscal year 08, fiscal year 09, and, and fiscal year 10. So but there will be money coming from, from, from the state. That's the nature of state government, is to participate and to distribute money back to the local communities. So we'll have better numbers, uh, you know, as, as time goes on. But are we in a difficult fiscal situation? Absolutely. I don't know how many of you watched 60 Minutes uh, Sunday evening. The local states face, the states face a trillion dollar debt. Much of that debt is in pension money because most states have defined benefit plans. Those defined, plan, defined benefit plans are not, <coughs> are not fully funded. We're in better shape than most states. We're in much better shape than most states, but that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods. So uh, there'll be difficult times for everybody. So if you have a question for me, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to address it. But I just wanted to make clear that that $200,000 that's going, that money has already been allocated uh, to the community. And that money would be coming to the community in fiscal year 2011. Well, the money the money comes now, and you can yeah. the money's the money's right. here, which is 20, you can which use is it. fiscal you year 2011. It, anytime after July 1st, no, we can use it anytime now. Or we are in fiscal year 2011. Right, you are. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's oh. in the current, not the not the yeah. budget that we just put the public hearing. <coughs> it's in the current budget. Or to either or. They said we could use it this year. You can or hold next it year. over. Yes. yes. Okay. Could, you, you could use the money at your discretion okay. through through fiscal year twelve. Okay. That's that's our yeah, money. It's, it's a discretionary fund. So basically, that wasn't anticipated revenue for this year. So it, it's actually two hundred thirty thousand. That's not currently in the revenue projections that I used for the tax impact for tonight. It's it's 230000 that could be used in that following year. Okay. That's Do we all understand what I'm trying to get at? Yep. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Qu further questions of uh, Senator D'Alessandro? Can I just ask? Oh, I yeah, go, ahead. Well, oh, go ahead, Keith. I'm and just curious. I'll Do we have an idea when, a new estimate of when we're going to get the guidelines for um, the expenditure of that money and how to be reimbursed? I know we haven't received that yet. Uh, I think you could be in touch with the Commissioner of Education, but uh, it, and that was my recommendation okay. to the superintendent. That superintendent I didn't get any new information on that. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to dig some up. Mr. Burt? Uh, Senator Del Sandro, um, the information I'm receiving at an early stage of my being a state rep up there. Uh, from Goffstown where is that there is about a 550 600 million to 800 million dollar deficit that we got to deal with are you hearing the same as I'm hearing that they are the legislators are looking <coughs> at cutting s state funding to the towns and, and bottom line when that happens the taxpayers at the local level will have to pick up that tab well any any time you don't have enough you don't have enough money it goes from one level to the next level to the next level, obviously. But the numbers you're talking about are, are for, for fiscal year 12 and 13. Yes. That, that's what we anticipated. That we're, we're in fiscal year 11 right now. So we, uh, we don't anticipate a deficit that large through June 30th. We're, 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 we're constantly looking at, looking at the budget. You know, I look at the revenues every day. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> We try to, we try to <coughs> that, but you've got the, we have all the guidelines in place for fiscal year 11. It's 12 and 13 where you, where you see a problem. And that problem has been 
articulated by every different group has a different number. And, and currently, uh, there are enough pieces of legislation before the legislature now to uh, radically change any budget that's being prepared. If, the, if those bills pass, there are 37 bills that refer to retirement. Each one of those has a, a, a fiscal effect on what happens in the next biennium. There are many tax decrease bills in. Those have a, a, a dramatic effect. I mean, if you reduce revenues, obviously you're going to have to reduce distribution. And there are a number of bills in to reduce revenue. So all of that will, will, will play out. We've got a very good chairman in the House. Ken Weiler will be the chairman of appropriations. He's a very solid guy. Chuck Morris will be the chairman of finance in the Senate. Uh, they're working together. I'm, I'm sure they're going to work together in, in promoting the budget for the next biennium. Thank you, sir. Sure. John? Good question. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Sure. Um, the the 200000 that you were talking about, was there an additional uh, an additional federal money coming in for, I think it was for teachers and firefighters that happened uh, last year, or was there an additional amount of money that was given to towns? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any additional money that went for, for, for teachers and firefighters. The money that I'm talking about was discretionary money, $20 million, and it was distributed to the communities, and they could use it at at, at their discretion, discretion. I don't know if there was any earmarked money specifically for to save jobs. Right. There wasn't that. Well, you could. I mean, that money that money came through the Title One money. Yes. Uh, and the special ed money that was all part of the ARA, the original ARA funding. That's 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 <coughs> been already dispensed, right. and that was good for 10, 11, and twelve you could <coughs> for those for those three years. And many districts did use it uh, for jobs. Okay. For the pension and jobs. That money's all been distributed. That was part of a $500 million allotment. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Further questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you, and Merry Christmas, everybody. And Merry Christmas. Happy, Christmas. Christmas. happy yeah. prosperous New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, level tax. Okay. For public comment, a as you're coming up, I want to let you know the public comment to this body would be for Goffstown residents only. And then when you say, well, wait a minute, Senator D'Alessandro is not a Goffstown resident, <laughs> but he is our senator that we vote for. So his name is on the ballot, and that's the only reason why he's, a, he's addressing. Or we <coughs> also allow, um, when we ask questions of department heads, they, they address the body. But just in the process, for those of you who have been watching for any length of time, you're going to know that I'm really a process kind of guy. So if you can state your name and your street. That'd be great for the record. Okay, thank you. It's Mark Warden, number four, Mountain Ash Lane. And I want to salute the budget committee and thank you for your hard work. I know you did a lot of number crunching, and it takes a lot of time and effort. I appreciate that. And um, really salute you for doing the, the bidding for the taxpayers on this. Frankly, I don't think it goes far enough, uh, but uh, it is nice to see a level-funded budget. and. To echo what some of these other gentlemen have said, uh, Bill Bates and Senator Del Sandro, the, the monies coming in from the federal level and the state level are, are in question. We know there's a huge bu budget at the state level. I'm a state rep as well. And we shouldn't be counting on that money. In fact, even the money that comes from Washington, D.C. comes from us uh, originally anyway. We're taxpayers, so we're going to see it through either the inflation tax or through the through our um, income taxes. <clears throat> so that money just gets laundered through Washington, but it still comes from us originally. So this is the time when we most need to be conservative fiscally and protect future taxpayers. My second point is that I'm a real estate agent, have been for 15 years, and <clears throat> I specialize in buyer's agency, working with relocation, people moving in from outside of New Hampshire. So as you can guess, Besides just the purchase price, people look at schools, location, and ver very importantly, the property taxes. It's usually one of the one or two top items on their list. So when they look at a list of the property taxes around the state, Goffstown gets tossed out. Well, especially when we have nearby towns that are very nice, also close to Manchester, with significantly lower tax rates, where New Boston, Manchester itself. So even though our location is good, people are choosing the other towns. Uh, to move to. So this is going to continue to depress the real estate values in Goffstown. It's going to make, make the 
average cost even higher. So we have to cut town and school budgets in order to uh, not kill off the, ghoul that lays, the goose that lays the golden eggs, which is the property tax and property owner. So that was my comment. Thank you again for your hard work, and we'll see you on January 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Further comment by the anybody who's here? Come, come on up. <laughs> um, my name is Michelle Romain. I live on Clancy Drive. Um, and I've started following the budget process very closely this year. I have two kids in the school system here in Goffstown, um, one at the kindergarten and one at Maple Ave. And while I am thrilled <coughs> with the education that they are getting, I am also an educator and see other things that are happening within the schools. Um, so to say that our schools are great is true. To say that there's not things that need to be addressed wouldn't be fair, um, Bartlett being one. My concern tonight um, is I was really disappointed with the process that happened in terms of looking over the budget motion that was handed to you. I was here when you did the town budget and looked at the motion that was made and went line by line and had various discussions with consensus and support, um, disagreement, and then back to the where you got to in the end. And I was expecting to see that tonight. I was thrilled to see less of a, d of a decrease than originally anticipated. Um, I'm all for reaching a reasonable compromise. I think that that's fair. Um, but we took less time to go through our school budget than we did, or you did, um, at any other point that I saw. Um, and I didn't see everything in all of your last meetings. I would have hoped that that process would have carried over and we'll go back to that for the remainder of the sessions and things that are happening. Um, just looking at the bottom line number that you wanted to cut, I don't think is fair. I think that we needed to look at each of the cuts that were made and have some of the discussions that started to happen. Um, the budget committee made a commitment early on in the process that they would keep the public informed, um, go line through put things up on the website, and so I commend you for sticking to that. I think that that's helped all of us figure out where you're coming from and for us to share with you where we're coming from. Um, I realize your task is to come up with a responsible budget, um, and mine is to be a responsible parent, and so that we have to work together, and I do hope that from here on that the committee takes responsibility for each of the things that are in front of them and doesn't look at this as a straight money dollar issue because it's not. So thank you for what you have done and I hope we all can continue to work toward this in a civil um, manner to reach a compromise. Thanks. Thank you. Further? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment. Um, anyone around the table want to make any final thoughts? And I will start making that list. I opened my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Uh, want to thank everyone on, on the budget committee. We all have our different opinions. And uh, I think uh, right now, uh, I think the guy had mentioned it on his website, it's a time for people to think about their families and, and have a good uh, you know, Christmas time and New Year's. And we'll get back at this on, on January 12th. Everyone did their jobs. And um, we have to respect each other's opinions, although we may disagree with them. But uh, it's the season. I want to wish everybody a happy holidays and, um, and have a happy New Year. I saw Bill Gordon, then I've got Guy and Keith. <coughs> Bill, you have the floor. What I'd like to say for the public is that uh, we cannot, as a committee, get together and discuss a motion that's coming up before we're sitting at this table. We could not discuss that motion that came up, period. I did not discuss it with Guy or anybody else. You may have discussed theories and you know, that type of issue, but this motion was done like every other I want you to understand that, please, uh, and have a good holiday. And, and as a, not quite a clarification, but as chairman, I get to interject between the names. 
uh, when something comes up. It makes it a lot harder and more difficult, actually, because when you don't get things, when you get here, and we have limited time and limited space to do this. Um, when you have a full-time job, I, have, I can talk personally, I have a full-time job, but if you talk to my wife and say, where's Dan? She's going to say he's up in his office. He says he's going to be up there for 20 minutes, and four and a half hours later, he comes down. But she's already sleeping because it's after midnight, and it, and it happens constantly. And the one thing that's really hard is, is when people have some ideas and they say, what about this? We really cannot get together because we are a public body, and we must discuss what we want to do in public. So if we were to get together, um, as I have conferred with the Attorney General, and he has said, you can't get together and do the public's work in private. You've got to do it in public, which is this scenario. And if we have to wait for the three and a half hours maybe we have twice a week, because we all have other lives, it makes it more difficult. But we have spent countless, I suppose we go back, we can count it, hours and hours and hours, but um, a in defense of not talking about every single number here, I can tell you I've looked at every single number. Because I have looked at that budget and I have key punched it and I have run it through a number of times. And so it's just that it wasn't done in public, it was done in <coughs> private in my office. And I have Guy Keith and John Burt. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to make mention, uh, everybody here on this committee looked at the, at the lines in this budget. And they're all familiar with, with the lines that are in this motion that was made. Uh, in answer to Michelle, and thanks, Scott, for bringing up the website, GoffstownBudgets.com is a nonpartisan site that I've had up for a few weeks. This and every other spreadsheet that's ever been presented to us will be posted there. To well, they're all up there except for this motion. <coughs> Tomorrow, this will be up there, too, and anybody can come and take a look and peruse the specific lines of anything <coughs> we've done. Um, so uh, it, we're trying to be as transparent as possible. Keith, you're next. Um, I, I'm going to I'm going to agree with Guy Karen in um, that he is putting up a lot of nonpartisan information on that website. Um, I'm not going to necessarily agree that they're being as transparent as possible as a committee, um, but I do want to also commend him on. I have to say I, I've had the chance to briefly look through this, um, and I'll say it's impressive enough that I can't find any obvious errors in his work, and that tells me he had to have put in many hours in order to come to tonight's motion. Um, I have to say we're going to agree to disagree on the effects of it, um, but I will say, though, I am happy that he took the time to put this together to present to us tonight. Um, it would be nice if that could be done for every motion, um, but obviously it's not feasible for someone to put in these type of hours, so I, I do want to commend Guy for that. Um, we have our differences. Um, I think we all have our differences here at the table. Um, I think what we need to do is work on trying to gain back each other's trust. And um, I think that's, that's going to be a hard battle with what's occurred over the past few years with personal attacks and everything. Um, but I'm hoping that maybe we can achieve that within the next year. And I wish everybody a great holiday, and we'll be back at this in January. And, and before John Burt speaks, I just want to make sure that we all know January 12th, I'm going to keep saying it, that is Wednesday, starts at 7 o'clock. There will be child, what are you going to call it, child care? Day care, yeah. Child care we'll have day snacks care, and a night care. Watch. Yeah. And we have so adult if you, supervision. If you, you know, don't. The Allen Garden <laughs> evening. And that's that provided by California. school. <laughs> or it's being donated by uh, some yeah. teachers okay. and can, can somebody. We all, oh, I get to do this. Sorry. Can we all still pay attention, please? Mr. Burt? Um, I want to thank the... Uh, budget committee for the hard work that we've all done uh, bottom line we're volunteers uh, we don't get a lot of pay which is zero um, I just want to thank them uh, I agree with Mark Warden when he stood up and spoke um, I can live with this budget because bottom line it is a true choice which I believe the voters have not seen in a lot of years um, I hope it continues to be a true choice of um, that they can make uh, and I think it's a uh, you know we did a lot of hard work and I just want to thank everybody and Merry Christmas and I hope Santa stops and sees every one of us excellent further comments by <coughs> members uh, 
then again, administrative announcements. Yes, Christmas is coming, the end of the week, New Year's. Uh, take a well-deserved break. Be here, if you want to come a few minutes early, on the 12th of January. It's a Wednesday night, is it not? Yeah. Here mm -hmm. at the high school. It is at the high school. Okay, we will, we will just go in the auditorium. We will not have a meeting, per se, after the public hearing. We will come back the following Tuesday, okay? And we will deliberate further any adjustments that you want to do and then vote on the number that will go to deliberative session, which is the next time we pass off our MS-27 and the MS-7 and the two MS-37s to their deliberative sessions, okay? Now, as I promised I would do, those of you with cell phones that you silenced, and thank you very much, go ahead and turn them back on, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, should we do minutes? No. Oh, okay. Should I take a motion to adjourn? I, I saw Bill. Do I have a second? Second. I heard Paul, but I saw Christie's hands first. Your choice. Bill. Merry Christmas. Gordon. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by raising your hand. Everybody? Anybody else? Everybody? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I was busy turning my phone back on. That is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.